Tractors descend on Parliament over betrayal of British farmers in post-Brexit trade deals. We're going to read into this more from Sky News, you guys. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Lee here with an article from Sky News with the headline that tractors descend on Parliament over betrayal of British farmers in the post-Brexit trade deals. Saving British farming claims imported foods is falling short of UK standards and farmers are being undercut by their counterparts in the EU who still receive subsidies. Guys, while you're here, make sure you hit the like button and share it across social media so others are notified of this video. So once again, British farmers are being... Um, ousted have been shunned by the conservative government once um and really it's not surprising um i welcome the fact that they've de that they've done this protest on monday night um with the tractors but um um but they really should be taking more of a page out of the french book if they really want to get something done um i don't think this is going to be enough i don't think the the conservative government is going to listen to them i do think labor would listen to them when they come in if they come into government at the next general election which is very likely also. Um, but uh, the fact that the post-Brexit trade deals that um, that the Conservatives secured with the likes of New Zealand and Australia don't benefit British farmers in any way, shape or form. And they've been, they've been shunned, they've been cut off. They were told that things would be better for British farmers if we left the EU. And uh, the exact opposite is, is happening. And, uh, and it feels like that British farmers are being left hung out to dry. Uh, at the expense of at the expense of at the expense of others, and it's really in damning to say the least. You know, we need we British farming matters. You know, we want to look up. You know, we talk about, but all those who talk about you know um, British of uh, British values and whatnot. I mean, does it not bother you? Does it not affect upset you the fact that these post Brexit trade deals since we left the EU, our British farmers are now worse off? Isn't that un-British that we don't want? Isn't it un-British that we don't want to protect our British farmers here to protect them from from other other trade deals that the likes of Australia and New Zealand could actually be be better off and could hamper and damage our British farming uh, farming works? How is this? How is this? A, you know, you can't say to me that you're for Brexit but you also protect British farmers because you can't have both. You can only have one or the other. Uh, in this situation because Brexit is tied into this whether you like it or not um, if we were part of the EU part of the single market currency I can tell you this would not be happening this would not be on, on the same scales um, and we are we are suffering because of this that is for sure there would not be these staged protests here and British farmers would be protected <sighs> a go slow convoy of more than 120 tractors made its way around Westminster Monday night as campaigners demand action on food security. Organised by the Save British Farming at the Kent Fairness for Farmers Group, they're calling for an end to a number of post-Brexit trade deals, which they claim allowing imports into the country that fall short of UK standards. And the campaigners are pointed out to deals with New Zealand and Australia and the CPTPP. We deal with 11 countries, including Canada, Japan and Mexico as well, as saying they long longer on the level playing field with European farmers who receive subsidies from the EU and can import their goods across the channel. The group also claims that there is a lack of import checks allowing substandard foods into the country as well as produce being labelled with a union flag despite not having been grown or reared in Britain. Yeah, that's one thing that you really need to be careful of now. Just because you see something in the shop saying made in Britain or has a union flag on it does not necessarily mean it's from Britain. If you look at a certain packages, you might actually find that they're actually made somewhere else, but they have it in very, very small print yeah, because they don't want you to know that it's not actually made in Britain, it's made elsewhere. So it's a very little, little trick. Yeah. One of the things um, Phil from a different bias pointed out in one of his videos, which I thought was very clever, is that what they do is, is actually uh, to, to imply that something is made in Britain. They take it to the factory first and then uh, for produce and whatnot, and then ship it out to the shops and supermarkets, and then they can say it's made in Britain, despite the fact that it wasn't actually made in Britain, but it was work was done in a factory before putting it out there, which is a nice little trick, yeah, to mislead the public as well. So that term made in Britain, there's a lot of products you're probably thinking they might not actually be made in Britain. So you be wary of that if you're somebody who is 
British and sovereignty. You might actually be eating something from the EU and you just don't know it. The convoy of, of tractors and trailers began the protest in New Convent Gardens in central London and the vehicles are now filling the roads around Parliament, done with banners and farmers beeping horns and bringing attention to their cause. So there's a picture there from that night. Saving British farmers founder Liz Westfield said farmers were completely and utterly disadvantaged, liking the situation to sending the England team football team to the World Cup and saying, off you go. You've got chains on your legs and chains on your hands. I don't think that's a very good analogy. I think it's a pretty crap analogy, if I'm honest. She added, in 2019, this government was elected with a mandate to uphold our standards and deliver a ready-made deal with the EU that would see Britain's agriculture boom. It is now entirely obvious that they have totally betrayed us all. Polling showed that public back back British farming and food and want to maintain high food standards to support local produce. We need radical change of policy and urgent exit from these appalling trade deals which decimate British food. Absolutely. Uh, Jeff Gibson, founder of Kent Fairness and Farmers, said it's so important that our message about substandard imports, dishonest labelling and concerns for food security is heard. With an election looming, we want to ensure the next incoming government takes up our cause. Farming Minister Mark Spencer and his sister government firmly backs our farmers and farmers was at the heart of British trade. Well, that's very funny. That's not how they're feeling right now, is it? Hmm? Do you think they're feeling like that? He added, we put agriculture at the forefront of any deals we negotiate, prioritising new export opportunities, protecting UK food standards and removing market access barriers. Dude, you've lowered our standards. We've maintained the 2.4 billion annual farming budget and recently set out the biggest ever package of grants which support farmers to produce profitability and sustainability. We're also looking at ways to improve further fairness in the supply chain. Do you think, do you feel it's fairness guys? Do you think it's fairness? And have launched a consultation to make food labelling fairer, supporting Britain's farmers and growers and ensuring high quality food produce get the recognition that they deserve. Do you feel recognised? I don't think so. Guys, I, I just feel like that while I'm 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 glad that they've made this protest and they're making their voices heard, <clears throat> which is great. And it's about time that, that they that, that they've done this. Do I think it's gonna make an ounce of difference to this current Conservative government? No. Do I think it may have it may uh it, I do you, I think Labour will take heed on this? I do think they will. I do think they will look at it and they will think very carefully about what they say about to Brit to British farmers next time they go around there and I, I do think they will lead and li listen to their wording but whether they will pull back on the trade deals that have already been signed I'm not sure about that but we'll have to wait and see but if they certainly the, an incoming Labour government which is likely will obviously need to do something to ensure British farmers are, are looked after and protected here because right now they're getting, they're getting they're going to get swamped. They're getting swamped by the EU market of those coming in at the moment. And as well, it's going to be coming from the likes of New Zealand and Australia and the CTPPP as well. So it's going to be a, it's very hard for British farmers to to take on them when they're going to be bringing in stuff which is going to be much cheaper as well, which is not good for our British farming industry. <clears throat> well, what do you guys think? Do you care about British farmers for British people? And if you so, surely you stand with the British farmers in saying that these post-Brexit trade deals are not in the interests of the British farmers. No? Tell me why then. Let me know your thoughts on this, on this deal, on the post-Brexit trade deal, the British farmers and the, and the situation it is in, down in the comment section below. If you found this video interesting, please hit the like button. We greatly appreciate it. Share it across social media so others are notified of this video. And subscribe because it really does help support the channel. And if you want to go one step further and financially support me in the work I do here, you can do so by becoming a YouTube member for as little as 99p or join me on Rumble or Patreon for exclusive content there as well. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to catch you all very, very soon.